Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rao. And the big breaking news this morning: the Al Qaeda chief has been killed in a U.S. drone strike. Good morning. I'm Divya Vadva, and we'll get you the details of the U.S. operation. Also in Rajya Sabha, debate on price rise today. First, let's take a look at the headlines. U.S. President Joe Biden announces that the United States has killed a leader of the Al Qaeda, Ayman Al Zawahiri, in an airstrike in Kabul. Biden says justice has been delivered. The Taliban spokesperson condemns the drone strike in Kabul as violation of the U.S. troop withdrawal agreement and a violation of international principles. Union Minister Nirmala Sita Raman responds to the debate on price rise in the Lok Sabha, says the Indian economy doing better than most other countries. The Congress walks out. The Rajya Sabha will hold a price rise debate today. Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Sorain says the BJP's efforts to topple the government in Jharkhand have failed, and after the Congress alleges a BJP conspiracy, after three of the MLAs were caught with cash. The IMD has issued a red alert warning for seven districts in Kerala. The Chief Minister's office asks people to be cautious. There's also red alert in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry till the third of August. And New York City and California have declared a public health emergency due to the spread of the monkeypox virus. U.S. President Joe Biden announced that the United States has killed leader of Al Qaeda, Ayman Al Zawahiri, in an airstrike in Kabul. Right, uh, Gargi declaring justice has been uh, delivered. Al Zawahiri has. Uh, was deeply involved in the planning of the 9-11 terror attacks. The U.S. President underlined further stressing that Al-Zahawari was uh, Osama bin Laden's leader. Biden pointed out that American citizens as well as interests and diplomats were targeted by him. The precision strike was carried out Sunday and no civilians were hurt in the operation is what the U.S. President has claimed uh, so far. President Joe Biden expressed hope that the killing of the Al-Qaeda leader brings one more measure of closure to families of the victims of the 9-11 that took place in 2001, those attacks on the United States. Now we have eliminated the Emir of Al-Qaeda. He will never again, never again allow Afghanistan to become a terrorist safe haven because he is gone, and we're going to make sure that nothing else happens. You know, it can't be a launching pad against the United States. We're going to see to it that won't happen. This operation is a clear demonstration that we will, we can, and we'll always make good on the sol solemn pledge. My administration will continue to vigilantly monitor and address threats from Al Qaeda, no matter where they emanate from. As Commander-in-Chief, it is my solemn responsibility to make America safe in a dangerous world. The United States did not seek this war against terror. It came to us, and we answered with the same principles and resolve that have shaped us for a generation upon generation, to protect the innocent, defend liberty, and we keep the light of freedom burning, a beacon for the rest of the entire world because this is a great and defining truth about our nation and our people. We do not break. We never give in. We never back down. Now, the Taliban spokesman, uh, Zabihullah Mujahid, has said in a statement that the attack took place on Sunday and the ruling Islamist extremist strongly condemns it as a violation of international principles and the 2020 agreement on the U.S. troop patrol. That's right. If we read out the tweets, and these are translations of the tweets that have been put out, the statement, statement of the Islamic Emirates, a spokesman on the drone attack in Kabul city. On the second day of the first moon, an airstrike was carried out on the residential house in Sherpur area of Kabul city. The nature of the incident was not revealed at first. The security and intelligence agencies of the Islamic Emirate investigated the incident and found that the attack was carried out by American drones. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan strongly condemns this attack on any pretext and calls it a clear violation of international principles and the Doha Agreement. Such actions are a repetition of the failed experiences 
the past 20 years and are against the interests of the United States of America, Afghanistan and the region. Repeating such actions will damage available opportunities. Uh, and there have been reactions around the world. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also tweeted the death of Al Zawahiri is a step towards a safer world. Canada will keep working with our global partners to counter terrorist threats, promote peace and security and keep uh, people here at home and around the world safe. Welcome back. Arrest of Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut was sent to four-day custody of the Enforcement Directorate in an alleged land scam case. The Sena MP has claimed that he is being framed as part of political vendetta. Right, uh, Gargi, Rajya Sabha witnessed disruption as Shiv Sena MPs protested against the arrest of Rajya Sabha member and senior party leader Sanjay Raut in a land a scam case. In court, the agency claimed that Mr. Raut was summoned thrice for questioning. So he appeared before it only once and during this time he tried tampering with key witnesses is what they have claimed. Now, uh, in other news, uh, in, uh, from Parliament, Union Minister Nirmala Sitaraman responding to the debate on price rise in the Lok Sabha gave an account of all the parameters to assess the economy and said there's no chance of the country going into recession or stagflation. She said there's a zero probability of India slipping into a stagflation or recession. Also adding that the Indian economy was doing better than most other countries globally so and credited the government a lot, keeping inflation at 7%. There is no question of India getting into recession or stagflation. Adirji, you please be assured there is no question of us getting into either a stagflation or like the US, they may say technical recession, whatever. A Bloomberg survey, which was done by economists, has said that zero probability of India slipping into recession. So it's not just me saying, there is zero probability of India slipping into recession. Even though there are several major economies who are in substantial risky positions of getting into recession. And uh, TDP founder and former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N.T. Ramarao's daughter Uma Maheshwari was found dead at her house in Hyderabad's Jubilee Hills. It appears that she died by suicide gargi. Uh, but no suicide note was found uh, by the police. The case has been registered and investigations are uh, currently underway. Let's go across to Uma Sudhir. Very shocking the incident uh, coming out of Jubilee Hills in Hyderabad, uh, Gargi. Uh, she was the youngest of his 12 children. That's right. She was the youngest of the 12 children of uh, N.T. Uh, Rama Rao. No suicide note has been found. And of course, uh, she lived with her husband who was currently away. Her younger daughter, who also lives in Hyderabad, had visited her on Sunday along with her husband. So a lot of questions being raised there. No suicide note found. And uh, she appears to have died by suicide. Uh, the police there still investigating the matter. All right, moving on to other news now. And as Kerala continues to receive severe rainfall for several days, uh, the IMD has issued a red alert for seven districts there. A press release by the Chief Minister's office says that the Kerala Chief Minister has requested people to be cautious of going into rivers, water bodies and streams. The police and fire brigade and other emergency uh, departments have been kept on alert to handle any kind of adverse situation. The fishermen have also been advised not to get into the sea. When we talk about that red alert warning, Gargi, that's been issued for Kerala till Thursday till the 4th. And then we also have a red alert warning in place for Tamil Nadu and Puducherry, and that is till tomorrow. So the next 48 hours are not looking good for most areas of the south. Also in Karnataka, an orange category warning has been put out. So when we take into account, Gargi, as far as the monsoon season is panned out, there's a 7% surplus in the country. But places like Kerala, where the monsoon season starts from, has a huge deficit. It's about 26% deficit. And uh, so uh, this red alert warning that we are seeing, of course, so when it rains, it pours and it rains non-stop. The amount it should have panned over weeks and months. And that's what we are going to see. Let's just take into account that in the south, there is a 28% surplus. But there are certain areas, especially like Kerala and other areas also in the country, which actually 
actually need uh, for it to rain. Uh, these are the areas, the rice uh, growing states of West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, those areas that actually do need some rain to come in. But now uh, the way it's going to be raining is obviously going to be causing a lot of mayhem. And that's why all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, precautions uh, that are being put into place and all the measures that are being right. put into place. Uh, when we take into account Kerala, there's a 26% deficit, very heavy showers expected in the area over the next three days. All right, and with that time for us to slip into a short break, we'll continue to track that top story, that big breaking news this morning, the Al-Qaeda chief killed in a drone strike. Stay with us. News of monkeypox now. The Kerala government on Monday confirmed that a young man who died in Trishur on Saturday had died to the West African variant of monkeypox. Well, that's uh, Gargi, India's first confirmed monkeypox uh, death. And of course, uh, that uh, takes a toll up as far as the world is concerned. And this is the fourth death outside of Africa. Our colleague Uma gets us the details. Emergency meeting of health officials after the Kerala government ordered a probe into whether a 22-year-old who died in Kerala's Trishur district on Saturday had died of monkeypox. This after the family revealed after his death that he had tested positive for monkeypox in the UAE. Uh, the preliminary uh, report says, say, says that this West African strain and from UAE it's a A2 variant. U, UK it's B1 variant, so usually it's like it's, uh, the study shows that. And from UAE, the three cases earlier identified, it's because it, it was because of A2 variant. So, uh, the, anyway, this is West African strain. The genomic sequencing is being done now. The 22-year-old came to India on July 22nd. It was on July 27th that he came to the hospital with symptoms of extreme fatigue and meningitis and not monkeypox symptoms. What the authorities are telling us is that he did not have the symptoms either when he landed at the airport or when he came to the hospital. The NIV has now been sent the samples of this person and contact list of everyone who came in contact with him from the co-passengers to the cab driver, relatives and friends, they have all been put under quarantine. Three positive cases of monkeypox have been reported from Kerala, five in all from India. The Kerala government has said none of the contacts of those put under quarantine have tested positive. Even world over, the fatality rate is low for monkeypox, but the WHO has declared it a global health emergency. With SP Babu in Tiruvananthapuram, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. And staying with news of monkeypox, uh, Gargi, the ongoing outbreak has led to the mayor of New York City as well as California to declare a state of emergency, uh, which is currently the epicenter of the outbreak happens to be New York. That's right. And the mayor said, and I quote, the current outbreak is spreading through physical contact, including oral and uh, and other intimate contact. The statement, the state has been providing monkeypox vaccines to citizens. The U.S. has reported almost 5,000 cases of monkeypox, with a majority coming from New York. But it's not just New York, Divya. Also, California has declared a state of emergency. And uh, the mayor of California said, and I quote, that California is working urgently across all levels of the government to slow the spread of monkeypox, leveraging uh, our robust testing, contact tracing, and community partnership strengthening uh, during the pandemic to ensure that those most at risk are our focus for vaccines treatment and outreach is what uh, Newsom uh, that is uh, the governor of California that's what he had to say And in other news, the president of the Maldives, Ibrahim Soleh, arrives in India on a four-day visit at a time when India is looking to strengthen its interests in the Indian Ocean region vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. Well, the president is accompanied by a big business delegation, will hold talks with the prime minister in uh, the national capital today. And the visit is expected to focus on uh, maritime uh, security, trade as well as economic cooperation. This is his second official visit to India since 2018. And India has been providing assistance to the Maldives in several infrastructure projects, while Indian tourists helped the Maldives economy after it reopened post-lockdown in 2020. And India has, in fact, extended its uh, support.
And finally, a special report, trees play a key role in our environment and well-being and they provide an ecosystem for animals, insects and other life. Well, the Good Quest Foundation and the Don Bosco College Bengaluru have for the past two years been planting tree saplings in the fringe areas of the wildlife sanctuary. This helps prevent soil erosion as well as land encroachment and man-animal conflict by encouraging green corridors through mass afforestation measures, Gargi. Tree planting initiative where every child from the tribal hamlet of Jiri Gegere is actively involved in planting and adopting trees. From regularly watching the saplings, caring and protecting the trees until they grow into healthy trees. The message is loud and clear. Plant trees, save forests. Save it's indeed been a wonderful experience being a part of this great initiative called uh, Save, uh, say yes to trees, uh, jointly initiated by uh, the Good Quest Foundation, Bangalore and uh, Don Bosco uh, College, TC Palya, Bangalore. We are committed to the task of promoting afforestation, thus making Earth a greener planet. BR Tiger Reserve and Wildlife Sanctuary was declared a tiger reserve in 2011, is home to hundreds of tigers. Forestation helps to ensure that there are enough forests for wildlife to thrive. The purpose of Say Yes to Trees is to plant trees and saplings around the forest fringes so that soil erosion can be prevented, animal-man conflict can be prevented, land encroachment can be prevented, and green corridor can be created around the fringes of the forest. Namagay was Santosa. Sana Nertete were Ella Gidgala, Chanagirbexa, Nama Cardo and Kula Beko, from a card of the Janaga, Sashikal Nitresa in Chanagirte, I of Mamma Jemmy Gimel Bandapas, Shiral Gabalat, Bandapasir. Like a Gregal Nitresa, booming me out of the Cassitilis. Outside, Sanagida. Involving the community in planting trees is an opportunity for local people to get connected with their own community and environment. The news just coming in of income tax rates at 40 locations in Tamil Nadu, Priyanshi. That's right, uh, Divya, and uh, the rates are currently underway. And what we know for now is that film producers are under scanner in these raids as uh, raids are being carried out at 40 locations in Tamil Nadu. Our colleague Arvind is joining us for more on this. Arvind, tell us more about these raids and also who are the people in involved in this. We're told that film producers are under scanner. Big names coming out there. Yeah, uh, Priyanshi, the income tax department is carrying out searches across the state of Tamil Nadu, mostly uh, covering uh, big uh, film producers and also financiers. As far as our information goes, that almost 40 locations across the state of Tamil Nadu, including Chennai, Madurai, etc., are being covered by the income tax department in this massive search operation that they have initiated at around 6 a.m. in the morning. So what we are being told is that uh, film uh, financier Anbu Chilean uh, is being covered in this search and seizure operation wherein he, is, he, he, he actually owns a company called GoProm uh, Firms wherein he produces and also he uh, he distributes all this movie. So we are all speaking in the Tamil The search that is the mills for the city and that's the part has raised us across the in flood so much both the residents and our uh, in the search operation by the income tax but along with that what we have been told is that several other big uh, firm producers are also being searched by the income tax department though we have not got their names but what we have been told is that this is a massive search operation that has been initiated by the income tax department based on the income tax evasion